Hello students, welcome to another video. Today we are going to discuss de Polignac's formula. So, today's topic is de Polignac's formula. De Polignac's formula. De Polignac's formula. In this formula, we will discuss the theorem that is the formula in this theorem. Let P be a prime number. Let P be a prime. Then, then the largest exponent. Then the largest exponent. Then the largest exponent e. Such that, such that, p raised to e divides n factorial. Let p be a prime number. Then the largest exponent e, such that p raised to e divides n factorial, is of the form, is of the form, e is equals to summation i running from one to infinity, greatest integer function of. Just a second. Greatest integer function of n upon p raised to i. n upon p raised to i. Let p be a prime number. Then the largest exponent e such that that p raised to e divided by n factorial is e is equals to summation i raised from one to infinity greatest integer function that or integral part of n upon p raised to i. <coughs> so this is the de Polignac's formula. E is the largest exponent. Of some prime p such that that p raised to e divides n factorial. In the example you have given that, or the example is of the form, find the largest exponent e such that suppose 2 divides some 100 factorial or 1000 factorial. So, in such problems you have to use this formula. So, we will prove this theorem or this formula. So, in the proof, we are going to prove this by using mathematical induction. First of all, if this p raised to i is greater than this n, if this denominator is greater than n, then this greatest integer function will become 0. Now, in the second case, we will prove or use mathematical indexer whenever this p raised to i is less than n. First, if this p raised to i is greater than n, then the greatest integer function of n upon p raised to i is equals to 0. Now, if our p raised to i is less than 0, then the remaining proof is by mathematical induction on n. Mathematical induction. Mathematical induction. Now, step first is we will prove the result for n is equals to 1. Step first, for n is equals to 1. So, for n is equals to 1, this p and we have given that p be any prime. We have to prove that for n is equals to 1, that p raised to e divides n factorial and that e is of the form summation of greatest integer function of n upon p raised to i. Here, if n is equals to 1 and p is prime number and this p is prime number, p is prime number, then we know that the prime number starts from 2. So, prime number may be a 2, 3, 4 and n is equals to 1, then clearly the greatest integer function is 0. That is, 0 is the largest exponent. is the largest exponent such that p raised to 0 divides 1 factorial since n is equals to 1 that is our 1 divides 1 hence the result is true for n is equals to 1 as p is prime so p is greater than 1 that is prime number starts from 2 so 
there are possibilities for p the possibilities for p are 2 3 then 5 then 7 etc and n is equals to 1 so clearly our greatest integer function of that 1 upon some prime is equals to 0 so 0 is the largest exponent such that p raised to 0 divides 1 factorial therefore our result is true for n is equals to 1 for n is equals to 1 now step second step second assume that the result is true for n is for n minus 1 that is some k is equals to n minus 1 result is true for n minus 1 that is e 1 is largest exponent of p E1 is the largest exponent of p such that that p raised to E1 divides n minus 1 factorial and this E1 is of the form summation i running from 1 to infinity greatest integer function of this n minus 1 upon p raised to i. So, in this step second we have assumed that the result is true for n minus 1. Now, in this step third we will prove the result is true for n. Now, step third to prove the result is true for n that is we have to prove that there exist that is we have to prove that there exist a largest exponent e of p such that this p raised to e divides n factorial p raised to e divides n this is our claim. Now, let n factorial can be written as n into n minus 1 factorial n into n minus 1 factorial and suppose this small j be any largest exponent of n j be largest exponent of n such that p raised to g p raised to j divides n suppose this j be the largest exponent largest exponent of n not n factorial we are proving the result for n factor that is p raised to e e is the largest exponent of p such that p raised to e divides n factorial here i have taken j with the largest exponent of n such that this p raised to j divides n if you write by mistake here p raised to j divided in factorial then j must be your largest exponent of p which divides in factorial so theorem must be proved for j instead of e so don't make the mistake here i am taking the largest exponent of n largest sorry the largest exponent of p largest exponent of p such that p raised to j divides n not n factorial so this is just a construction here so now i have taken n is equals to n into n minus 1 factorial and j is the largest exponent of p such that p raised to j divides n now this j is the largest exponent of p which divides n and in the second case in the second step we have consider e1 is the largest exponent of p which divides n minus 1 factorial then our e must be equal to this j plus e1 therefore we have to prove that now we have to prove that now we have to prove that this our largest exponent e must be the summation of j plus e1 since now consider 
E1 is the largest exponent of P which divides n minus 1 factorial and J is the largest exponent of P which divides n. So, here multiplication. So, our largest exponent E must be the summation of J and this E1. So, now we have to prove that this E is equals to J plus E1 or that is we have to prove we have to prove j is equals to just rearranging this we get j is equals to e minus e 1 we have to prove j is equals to e minus e 1. Now, in after that after this step we will consider this right hand side and prove this e minus e 1 is equals to j. Now, consider now consider e minus e 1 is equals to now e is the is of the form uh, summation i ranging from 1 to infinity greatest integer function of n upon p raise to i minus e 1 is summation of i ranging from 1 to infinity greatest integer function of n minus 1 upon p raise to i. So, just taking summation here summation is over i from 1 to infinity and summation is again over i from 1 to infinity in both the cases there are p raise to i. So, I just summarize this i ranging from 1 to infinity greatest integer function of greatest integer function of n upon p raise to i minus greatest integer function of n minus 1 upon p raise to i. Suppose this is equation number star. Suppose this is equation number star. Now, here if our p raise to i divides n, p raise to i divides n. So, we will take here p raise if p raise to i divides n then then our p raise to n divides p sorry p raise to i divides n then n is equals to p raise to i times k here k is integer this is by using definition of divisibility. So, by definition of divisibility we can write n is equals to p raise to i into some k then then the greatest integer function of n upon p raise to i will become now here greatest integer function of n upon here p raise to i divides n and this is the quotient k. So, the quotient is itself integer k is integer and greatest integer function of this quotient k is equals to k itself since n can be written in the form p raise to i times k. So, our k is quotient. So, if we divide this number n by p raise to i they will then we will get the integer k and greatest integer function of integer is that integer itself and this greatest integer function of n upon p raise to i is equals to k and greatest integer function of n minus 1. So, I am just subtracting one number from this n and dividing this number by p raise to i then our greatest integer function must be k minus 1. Since here p raise to i completely divides n, but p as this p raise to i divides n. So, that p raise to i does not divides n minus 1. Since two consecutive integers are odd and even numbers. So, we will get the greatest integer function of n minus 1 upon p raise to i is equals to k minus 1. Now, by we have to prove that e minus e 1 is equals to j. So, if we put these values in equation number star, then after subtracting this we will get therefore, greatest integer function of n upon p raise to i minus greatest integer function of n minus 1 upon p raise to i is equals to this k minus k minus 1 which is equals to positive 1. So, this subtraction is equals to 1 whenever our p raise to i divides n. In the second case, if our p raise to i does not divides n, if p raise to i does not divides n, then then or that is our n can be written in the form p raise to i times k plus some remainder. Here our p raise to i does not divide c n means there is some remainder. If you divide this number n by p raise to i, then there will be some quotient and some remainder by using <coughs> division algorithm. We can write n is equals to p raise to i times k plus r where remainder may be 0 or less than our divisor that is p raise to i. Then again we will find the greatest integer function of n upon p raise to i. So, n upon p raise to i writing p raise to i plus k plus 1. So, writing just value of n we can write p raise to i times k plus r 
upon p raised to i. So, this can be written as p raised to i p raised to i. So, k plus r upon p raised to i. So, here r is less than p raised to i. So, this greatest mixture function will become 0 and this k is integer. So, this greatest integer function is equals to k and similarly, the greatest integer function of n minus 1 upon p raised to i can be written as this p raised to i k plus r value of n is equals to this minus 1 upon p raised to i. Clearly, this p raised to i p raised to i gets cancelled. So, here it remains integer k plus this r minus 1 upon p raised to i as our r is less than p raised to i. So, r minus 1 is again less than p raised to i and that greatest integer function will become 0. So, k plus 0 is equal to k. So, the reason for this step is as r is less than p raised to i then r minus 1 is again less than p raised to i. Therefore, the greatest integer function of r minus 1 upon p raised to i will become 0. This is the reason for this step. Now, here greatest integer function of n upon p raise to i is equals to k. Again, greatest integer function of n upon p raise to i, n minus 1 upon p raise to i is equals to k. So, subtracting this equation star become therefore, this greatest integer function of n upon p raise to i minus greatest integer function of n minus 1 upon p raise to i will become k minus k is equals to 0. So, this value is non-negative. So, sorry, this value is non-zero whenever our p raised to i divides n and this value is zero when our p raised to i does not divides n. So, from these two cases we get from these two cases we get the subtraction of in greatest integer function of n upon p raised to i and n minus 1 upon p raised to i is equals to. So, there are two values of this subtraction 1 and 0. 1 whenever our p raise to i divides n and 0 otherwise that is p raise to i does not divides n. Hence, hence this equation star can be written as therefore, equation star can be written as therefore, equation star can be written as E minus E 1 is equals to summation i running from 1 to infinity greatest integer function of n upon p raise to i minus summation i running from 1 to infinity n minus 1 upon p raise to i or just write that equation as it is and we will get here the value is 1 possible when this p raise to i divides n and 0 is possible whenever our p raise to i does not divides n, but we need e, mi e minus e 1 is equals to j. So, some non-zero value. So, there is only one possibility that p our p raise to i must divide n and if p raise to i divides n then, then there are if we take the summation summation of this then we will get the summation of i 1 i running from 1 to infinity. Then that summation whenever our i is equals to j. So, if our i becomes greater than j that is j plus 1 j plus 2 then we will get the subtraction is equals to 0 and this summation is summation of this number is up to j times summation summation of 1 j times means 1 plus 1 plus 1 up to just write it as summation. So, just make one step 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 this addition of 1 is j times j times. Since j is the largest exponent of p which divides j is the largest exponent of p which divides n as we have taken j is the largest exponent of p which divides n. So, there are j possibilities for i that is i running from 1 to j this summation of i running from 1 to j greatest nature function of n upon p raise to i minus this and this subtraction is non-zero for if p raise to i divides n and p raise to i is divides n is possible for maximum j values and 1 will appear for each value that is summation of 1 will be j times and this summation will give us 
j that is e minus e 1 is equals to j hence hence the result is true for n is for n therefore by principle of mathematical induction therefore by principle of mathematical induction result is true for all the values of n result is true for all n hence the proof hence the proof